Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be talking a bit more about Glide Ajax in ServiceNow. In the previous video we looked at why we use it and how we set it up. Now in that video we saw how we return one value back from the server to the client. Um, in that case it was the email address of a selected user. In today's session we'll be seeing how we can return multiple values back from the script include server side to the client. And there's a couple of different ways we can do that, so we'll look at both. If you haven't seen that previous video on Glide Ajax, I've added a link to the description or just click on the, uh, the video here. So let's take a look at the first method we can use. So as before, I'm going to continue and use the catalog item created for this BMW 3 Series. Now, since the last video, I've added to this, so I've added some additional variables into the variable set. So we have a variable set called request to details. Now, before, in our previous video, we used Glide Ajax to select the person's name and return in the email address. Now, I've added two additional variables in terms of job title and department. So this time we're looking to get the email address, the job title and the department when the person's name is selected. So let's go and take a look. So here's our script include that we used last time. So we're going to need to amend this because at the moment all we can see is that we're returning one value and that's the email address. So let's go ahead and just to make, make those amendments now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to comment that out. We still want to run this user query, so that's good. What we need to do now is we need to build a new response element for the result because we're going to need to add things to it in order to send them to the client script and get them back. So we're going to declare a new item. And this is a new tag, so we're going to call it result we could call it anything we like as long as we remember that and then what we need to do is add attributes to our new item that we've created so on line 11 we've created result we want to add stuff to it and this and how we add things to it is we're going to type this set attribute we want to set the email address and what's that equal to so in fact We've already got that. Let's just copy and paste that. OK, so what we've done there is we've added an attribute to our result item. And we've added the attribute called email and we've made it equal to the user email. So all we need to do now is do that two more times. One, two, one for the title and one the department. Okay, so there we have a new item that, that we've built in the script include and three attributes that are injected into it. I'm going to save and let's go and make some adjustments to our client script. So if we look at this, this is what we used last time. We get back the answer attribute and we set the value of the email address equal to answer. And that was when we were only getting one value back. Now we're getting three, we need to do things slightly differently. So the first thing we're gonna do is comment this line out. So we can see what the difference is. Declare our new variable. And this is where it gets a little bit different. Okay, so what we're doing there is we're getting all the elements in that response XML that we're getting from the server side. We're getting all the elements that are called result. How did I know to put result in there? Was it a guess? Well, no. When we were back over in the script include, I called the element result. Now we could call that test. As long as we change this to test, we would be okay. We'd be able to get the information back. So what we're doing here is we're fetching that tag or getting all the elements of that tag name. Now, when I said all the elements um, with that, that tag name, 
it could be more than one. So we could have multiple tags in our script include or uh, multiple items that are called result. So what will happen is this will return returns an array. Okay. So we need just need to be aware of that of how we um, process that on the client side. So in order to get at the information we want and set the values, we can build on this. So it's three. Now I'm going to change that to title. This one to department. And then it will make this like this so it'll be result it'll be the first because we've only got one um, one element in our array we know it's going to be the first one so I'm just going to put zero in there if we get multiple back we probably need to do a for loop and, and iterate through them to process them the way we want them to then we use this get attribute and what's the attributes name well in this case the email its email. So before we continue, let's let's look at that. So we're getting the result. The result we declared on line 14. We know it's the first um, element on our array. In which case we put zero, and we're using get attribute. So get attribute is going to get us the attribute of email. How do I know it's email? Back over here, we defined it here. Set attribute as email. So then we need to change or at least add to these and the title one the attribute is called title and the department is called department okay so now we have our script include with our new item defined and the attributes we're pushing into it and on the client side we have a new format and the way we're getting the result back and we're setting the value of three different fields with um, items that come from that array result that we get back so let's click save and go and see back onto our catalog item so now when we select able we now get back our three results. Now, obviously we can all see in that department one, we're actually getting the sys ID back of the department. Now we actually want the name. So we could just go and change that over here. If I call it get display value, click save. Let's try that again. Okay, brilliant. So now when we select the person's name, we're getting all the attribute information that we wanted. So now we've seen that method, let's look at the second way that we can do this. Let's just reload this so we're ready. And let's go over to our script include. So this is our script include that we've just amended or just changed to. Now, the other way of doing it is we can create an object we're going to introduce a term called JSON stringify. So we'd stringify that object. We then send that to the client. We then pass that object and we use it in the client script. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So we're going to remove the information we just created. And when we found again, so the query for the user is going to remain the same. When we found the user, we're going to declare a new object like that and what we want to do is create this object and push in the relevant information so in our case we need to say object email is equal to the user's email we're going to say object title is equal to the user's title and object department equals 
to the user's department. Okay, so what I've done there is I've declared my new object and I've created three new attributes within that ob object or new properties called email, title, and department. And the value of those keys or those properties are here. So we've got email is equal to email, title is equal to the user title, department is equal to the user department. So there we've created our new object. All we need to do now is return that back to the client. And we can do that like this. We stringify the JSON. So if you want to learn more about that, JSON stringify and JSON parsing, just drop some in the comments. I'm more than willing to do a, um, a video specify, uh, specifically around those. Um, but essentially what line 16 is doing, the JSON stringify, it's taking the object we just created and it's putting it, it's converting it into a string. That string will then be sent to the client. And then what we do in the client is we turn it back from a, from a string back into an object. So let's save that and go and do that now. So we're now in our client script. So we need to make some amendments to um, the, the the configuration we did previously. So let's remove that line we added in. Let's keep with our existing line that we used for one value from the previous video. And what we do here is we can say our result, we'll call it result, JSON pass answer. And then we can set the email address is equal to J, uh, result email. The title is equal to result title. And the department, you guessed it, is equal to result department. Okay, before I forget, let's just go back and change our department to display value. We don't want the sys ID again, do we? Okay. So back on our client script, let's just look at this. So from the previous video, and from we how, how we get one value returned back from a script include, we haven't changed this line. We haven't had to change it as we did on our, our method one. We're still getting back the answer attribute. What we're doing here is we're passing the results. So we've, we've got that, that JSON stringify I mentioned, and we're popping that back into an object. And once we've done that, we can then access that object in the normal way, so the dot notation. So object.email, object.attribute. And these are the attributes, email, title, and department, which we set over here. Okay? The only other thing I, I would point out and what we should do here is we could put if answer, then do this. So we could add that that um, that condition in there. So what that's telling us is if we get an answer back, then run that code. If we didn't do that, it's going to try and pass potentially nothing, and it's going to throw an error in the console log. So we're going to put that in. So it's going to say when we get a result back, or if we get a result back, then we run this code. Let's save that. And let's go and take a look. So now back on our item. When we select the user, again, it's the same result as we got with method one. It's just we got it a different way. Okay, so one uses set attribute and get attribute um, within the XML. And the other one creates an object, stringifies the object, passes the object, and then we, we use it that way. Now, you can use both methods. Which one do I prefer using? Personally, I prefer using method two. Um, and the reason being is because I haven't got to remember to change this line 13 stays the same the dot notation result 
dot um, is kind of, I don't know, second nature to me. Um, and parsing and stringifying again is, is something that I'm, I'm familiar with. So I guess my personal preference is I go for option number two. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like or a subscribe if you did. If there's anything you want me to expand on or go into different topics and cover, cover more in future, um, please feel free just to add some comments to the um, comments below. Um, thank you all for watching.